Welcome to Central Moments again today. If you're over 25 years old, uh, you're probably already beginning to suspect that it's easier to start well in life than it is to finish well. Starting usually has a lot of adrenaline and enthusiasm and, and dreams and hopes associated with it. Those are very motivational elements of our lives. And so it's often easier to start well, but uh, it's harder to finish well because, um, because we start wearing out and we get discouraged and not everything works out like we had hoped it would work out. But today, as we look at Paul's, again, at Paul's Timothy, uh, Timothy relationship, his relationship with his son in the faith, Timothy, Paul is in 2 Timothy about to die. He's about to have his head taken off by Nero. And he's in very harsh prison conditions, evidence that he's cold and, 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 and there's nothing to focus on. He asked Timothy in 2 Timothy to bring his books and his scrolls. And, and, and he, he says, I think I'm going to die pretty soon. And, and Timothy was like so close to him. And, and here he's writing a letter to Timothy. What would you write in your last letter to one of your dearest friends? knowing that you're about to finish your run, not start your run, but finish your run. And here we learn a lot about finishing well. Paul says, verse 6, I am already being poured out like a drink offering. That's an allusion to the Old Testament ceremonial processes where they had drink offerings, where they poured offerings out on the altar of God. I'm already, my life is like that. My life's now being poured out. I'm about to die. Um, and uh, he said, my departure is near. I have fought the good faith, I have finished the race, and I have kept the faith. Well, one of the things we need to do to finish well is in all the years leading up to that, we need to stay focused on God's purpose for our lives. His purpose. I mean, it's a powerful thing when you know what you're living for, you live it 100%, and wherever you've been, you're changing your surroundings rather than just yielding to them and giving in to them. This is God's call on our lives, to be influencers, for, for him and the gospel and to be great husbands and wives and parents and grandparents and great employees and great business managers and great company o owners and great surgeons. I mean, he's called us to these places. And, and he said, he said I, I, I've, I've kept the faith, I've run the race, I've fought the fight. And it's been a race and it's been a fight because sometimes it's been exhausting. But, but, but I, I, I stayed on. I mean, I started out, but... But then I kept going, focused on those most important things in my life. In verse 8, Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearance. And so Paul says, says you know, uh, not only did I stay focused on what I felt like God called me to do, and I worked hard at it, and I fought the fight, I ran the race, I, I put energy I I into finishing what I started. But he says on top of it, I, I constantly reminded myself in life that I wasn't doing this for me. I wasn't even doing this for other people, ultimately. I was doing this for Jesus because he's the one who ultimately would give me the thumbs up or the thumbs down on how I'd run the race in my life. And so he said, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm about, he said, I live with this reality that someday I'm going to stand accountable before Jesus and I'm going to receive the crown of righteousness, his righteousness given to me. And, and, and Jesus is going to be not only my savior, but my judge. And, and, uh, and he's going to award me um, the crown of righteousness for the faithfulness with which I stayed with him. This is an important perspective. Uh, all of our lives are accountable. I want to live with this myth that we're not accountable to anybody, but we're accountable to Jesus. And so you keep that in the front of your heart and mind, and that'll help you finish well. And then he says in verse 16, of chapter 4. At my first defense, no one came to my support. So he would have had a, a pre-trial uh, before he appeared before Nero in his final trial. And he said, at my first defense, no one came to my support, but everyone deserted me. And he said, may it not be held against them. Like in that court, I looked around the courtroom and nobody from the church was there. Uh, they were all afraid. And, and I was just alone. And uh, and he said, I don't want, I understand. I don't want to hold that against them. But the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was delivered from the lion's mouth. The Lord stood with me. And that's what we're going to pray now today. 
because uh, above all, you can finish well. Even when, even when some of your encouragers and supporters aren't there, you can still finish well. Even when people seem to let you down at the time you're counting on them most, you can still finish well. As you stay focused on your mission, you keep doing it for Jesus to whom you're going to give account. And you realize that today, Jesus will stand with you. Father, thank you for this. Thank you. We're never really alone. But we can finish well because you've stood with us. Thank you. We look back over past years if we walk with you for a while and say, you just stood with us in the hardest of times. And my God, I thank you that today you're going to stand with us. And tomorrow you're going to stand with us again. And I praise you that because of that, we can finish well. And so our eyes are on you, our hope is in you, and our love is for you. And our praise is towards you today who stands with us. But the Lord stood with me. Lord, those words of Paul we take to ourselves today in faith and with gratitude. In Jesus' name, amen.